The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got a hot CPI number this morning, folks. Inflation persistent, to say the least. And we got markets accelerating lower. You have an S&P off by more than 2% right now. We're 10 points off of the low. You almost got a 3,400 handle. Just briefly, we were down as low as 3,506. Right now, you're negative by 2% on the dot, negative 71 points in the S&P, trading at 3,515. NASDAQ 100, you're off 2.9% right now. We might see a 9,000 handle in the NASDAQ, folks. You could see a 9,000 handle today, man. You could see it possibly this week. You could see it before, as we come into the November meeting. We're trading at 10,530. We're well below the lows of June now. A solid 500 points almost below. NASDAQ 100 off 2.8%. The Dow is off 500 points right now, 28,754. You get the Russell, not quite at those lows from June, 1658. The Russell down 2% as well. Bitcoin, 18,165. We got a 17,000 handle briefly. That's a fifth, that's a daily. There's your 15 minute action. You can see the volatility on Bitcoin on the hot CPI number as well. So, what's going to happen? We're going to have higher rates. Right, the higher rates, people are going to want those higher rates. How do they access those higher rates? They access them, them with US dollars. What does that do? That puts strength in the dollar, uh, and that continues the trend we've seen in many. We have the yen spiking today, gold. That's why I make that segue. Gold lower this morning on a stronger dollar. Gold down $20 to 1658. Now, gold. Not quite back to the 1622 area. It was at in September 28th there. Back to the 15-minute chart. We jump over to silver. Silver right now down about 35 pennies to 1859. And look at the move in notes and bonds, man. You talk about a move right now. We got higher yield across the board, to say the least. You're looking at right now a 10-year down a full point and 10 ticks. Okay, but we were higher coming into that number, folks. You were trading at 111.28, you almost just traded down two full points in the 10-year. We have the 10-year right now at 4.06%. 4.06%. Let's jump up and down the line in terms of the yield curve. Where we are, your two-year, above 4.5%. Your six-month at 4.3%. Folks, I've said it before. If you have money, whether it's in a checking account, just sitting there, okay, a one month, you can have your money tied up for 30 days and you should be getting around 3% for that money right now, let alone three months is 3.7, six months is 4.3, the two years at 4.5, the 10 year is above four, and even the 30 year is at 4%. Talk about a rise, man. Look at the rise in those yields on that number as we hit it this morning on a hot CPI. We'll get over to the data in a moment, okay? Why not? Hey, let's jump to the data actually because this is the headline that you're going to see. As well, the headline that you are going to see, folks, core inflation rises to a 40 year high. Not what was expected, man. Prices excluding food and energy increased 6.6 percent from a year ago. But here's the kicker on a month over month basis. This is, I think, the biggest data point within the CPI on a month over month basis. OK, you had the core CPI coming in at 0.6 percent versus 0.4%, folks, 0.6% over a 30-day period, you multiply that by 12, you're at 7.2%. The core CPI number right now is currently running hotter than it was over the last year is one thing that you could say with the headline number of 6.6%. That is the highest level since 1982. From a month earlier, there's your 0.6% number when you get it in there. The overall number, 0.4% last month, up 8.2% from a year earlier. So headline number, 8.2 versus 8.1. A little hot, not too dramatic. But on a core basis, rising 0.6% taking energy out of the equation, taking food out of the equation, 
Um, it's a it's a tough one, folks, in a big way. And they were looking for a 0.4 percent month on the core number. Okay, so they were looking for a 4.8 percent annualized number on the core, and they come in at 7.2 percent annualized. That's another way to put it in the last 30 days. Okay, now yeah, you're going to get a lot of vol volatility on a monthly basis. But folks, 0.6 on a monthly basis is a big difference than 0.4 if those numbers hold um, and there's not too much volatility skewing the number, maybe 0.1 or 0.2 in one direction over a 30-day period. Now, the number they were looking for on the headline was 0.2. That number came in at 0.4. Folks, look at this chart, okay? This chart is just CPI and then it's core CPI, okay? You have CPI in the pink and you have the core CPI in the black. Now we have had over recent times periods where the headline CPI number has spiked, but a lot of it had to do with energy. Okay, you go back to 2008, we had the headline numbers pushing 5% inflation, but core was at 2.3% annualized, folks. You get that? Core was at 2.3% annualized. Okay, a lot of talk back then. Right. Do you remember the conversations taking place, folks, saying, man, how do they take food and energy out of the equation? Right. I know they're saying that core is at two, two and two point three. But Americans are really feeling the hurt because we got gas prices in 2008, whether it was 2008, whether it was in 2012. Right. You see the headline number approaching four percent. But again, core was at two. OK, many times we haven't seen a spike like this, folks, as they say, since 1982 on a core basis. And boy, it seems like it's more persistent than most are talking about. We got a November meeting coming up. That November meeting, 75 basis points. I'm sure you're going to start hearing a conversation about 100, folks. If it's if 75 was already baked in, which it pretty much was, and we got this number, well, a lot of the conversation this morning, just in the last 30 minutes, or 45 now, from the 830 number, was saying, okay, well, what about the December meeting, Right. Well, let's go back. What about the November meeting, man? If November had 75 baked in, I'm not saying it will happen, folks, but that is going to be the conversation and it's going to shift to December. Now, housing prices. We've been talking about housing prices on this program, folks. Shelter costs, which are the biggest services component and make up about a third of the overall CPI index, rose 0.7% for a second month. Rent of shelter was up the most on record on an annual basis as was owner's equivalent rent. Folks, keep your eye on shelter. We've been talking about it. So shelter is um, about a third of the overall CPI. Shelter represents about 40% of the core CPI. And you're seeing it up the most on record on an annual basis and shelter is a lagging indicator. So now part of the conversation in my head shifts to when is the Fed going to start talking about that shelter is going to have a lagging effect and that might allow them to not have to continue to hike in the face of core numbers that are going to run hot for some time, folks. Shouldn't be surprising that housing cross, uh, costs are as persistent as they are. How about food? Now, food, again, not in the core number, but in the headline. 0.8% for a second month, 11.2% higher from a year ago. Yeah, um, some wild numbers here, hot numbers on the CPI, the market reacting this morning, yield spiking higher, dollar higher. Uh, how about the yen, man? We'll jump over to the yen. US dollar yen right now. Come on, cooperate. It's not pulling up. We'll pull it up when we get back, folks. We'll talk to our man, Kevin Hanks. S&P's down by 74. It's going to be a wild one. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have S&Ps down 80 points futures right now, right near the lows of the session, trading at 35 off 08. That's off two and a quarter percent now on the S&Ps. You get the NASDAQ 100. We're off 2.9 percent right now. The Dow off 560 points. That's 1.9 percent in the red. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time right here on Tiger TV. Fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network. And boy, we're going to have a fast market today. We'll just jump right into it. Kevin Hanks, what do you think of this market, man? Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. You know, the headline from today's CPI report will be very simply no progress. Um, this is a number that really the reaction is worse than the actual number. And the market is down because really all the work that has been done by the Fed raising interest rates has had no effect. Really, not because the Fed, but because very possibly the other branches of government are working against the Fed. And you just can't keep spending money and expect inflation to go down. And that's what we have here. Uh, numbers that, if you look, Tommy, food at home, up 0.7. Food away from home, up 0.9. That's food at home, Tommy, up 13% over the last 12 months. Food away from home, up 8.5%. Services, less energy. Shelter, up 0.7%. Transportation services, up 1.9%. Medical care services, up 1%. And that, Tommy, with the overall energy space lower in terms of inflation. And you can make the case, Tommy, that energy, since this report was probably printed, is higher than where it was. So there's just no good news. Um, the numbers, you know, it's not like they were red hot. They just didn't get better. They got slightly worse. That core number on a 0.6% on a monthly basis, you know, my head goes, wait a second, we're supposed to have 2 to 3% inflation 
our goal in the long term. And I think it's uh, uh, most reasonable Good minds now. will say it's going to take some time to get back there uh, if and when we do. Uh, but boy, at 0. 0.6 on a monthly basis, Kevin, on the core number, that takes out food and energy. But you just went over some of the components, man, um, even shelter, a huge component that could have a lagging indicator in there. So with that in mind, Kevin, we go forward to we got Fed minutes yesterday as well. Uh, nothing too surprising in there. The market took it pretty much in stride. We go forward to the November meeting, the December meeting. 75 was already baked in in November, Kevin. Where does the conversation go? Do they start talking about 100 basis points again? I think it seems like maybe at least you have to bring it up. If 75 was already baked in and we got a number that missed, shouldn't the conversation start shifting yet again We as we, as we go over that same playbook? Two things. Uh, I think 1% will creep into the narrative. I don't know if it'll happen, but what will happen, Tommy, is the net target will go higher, which means, you know, they were talking about 75 basis points, 50 basis points, 25. No, that it's going to be 75, maybe another 75 or 75, 50, 50. All the back numbers are going to go higher. These yields, unfortunately, Tommy, have to go higher to fight inflation. The only the only thing that you can make a case for with some of the lags, some of the moves in its trade haven't hit the market yet, but Tommy, no on inflation. None of what they've done so far. Remember, they started in March. We're in, we're in October and there's been no drop off in inflation. I well because in August the administration has spent 1.1 trillion dollars and that is working against the fed rate hike it is interesting man how that 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 argument that that reason the the just the conversation gets a little bit more difficult in my opinion when you say well it's lagging well i know we're not going to get back to two percent you know in a year or something like that but aren't the numbers supposed to start moving a little bit right which is what kind of the fear is out there uh how about yields this morning kevin up across the board man i have some of the curve up here right now we get the two year above 4.5 percent we get the 10 year at 4.07 percent uh what do you think where 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 can this 10 year go man it doesn't seem like it's stopping right now in face of where we go dollar higher yield higher uh, is working against stocks as well. We saw the spike. You know, it's interesting. Pre-CPI number, the market was looking pretty solid. You had moves in the U.K. The Sky News was reporting that they were talking about a U-turn on the U.K. tax plan. You had the dollar lower. You had yields lower. You had the British pound higher and stocks higher, and then all of it wiped away with one number. Pretty wild, man. Um and we get to do it over and over again, man. It's already October 13th. We're going to be coming into a Fed meeting before we know it. And I know we kick off some earnings, man, beginning tomorrow. What are you guys talking about coming up at 12 o'clock on Fast Market today, Kevin? Today will be all about financials. We, tomorrow morning before the open, we've got J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo. We'll cover as many of those as we can fit in a one-hour show, Tommy. It's an interesting one with the banks, right? I mean, they're supposed to make money when you have a high yield, but we know that's not exactly the case going on. Everything's selling off right now. We get the S&Ps down 81 points. Uh, it's going to be a fast market today, Kevin, as is the case lately. We appreciate you coming on with us as you do, uh, and we don't talk to you on tomorrow, man. So you have a great show. We'll be watching at 12, and we'll talk to you on Tuesday, Kevin. Have a great day, Tommy. Have a great weekend. You too. Folks, tune in every trading day. We're coming into earnings season, man. Banks kick it off tomorrow. J.P. Morgan right now. Check it out. I mean, they're off more than $2 right now. J.P. Morgan, and you look at the weekly, man, right? You talk about a sell-off. Chopping around between 150 and 170 for the better part of last year? No, we're at 103, and you're going to open at 101 today, folks. That's basically the higher range that this chopped around during the COVID lows of 2020 when you had interest rates and yields basically at zero to negative. Now we have yields on the 10 year, right? Approaching 4.5% and banks can't make any money right now with what's going on. Uh, lots of variables going on. As Kevin mentioned, man, we'll jump around to some of the currencies. You get dollar higher. Now that's a weekly, just putting it back on a daily here. Pretty well-defined channel line, folks. If you're talking about the upper portion of this trend, trend line, you're talking about 115 on the upside for the dollar. We take a look at the Euro US dollar. 
whew, you, you trade to the lower portion, you're talking about 93, man. Well within play, folks. This is not over, as we see on that number. Things are going to play out for some time. We, real, we will reach a peak at some point, whether it's the dollar index, whether it's our yields, right, whether it's the Fed's hiking cycle. But, boy, it is very tough to argue about any type of a lag in the data when you have prints that are 40-year highs in core CPI. I mean, did you see that headline, folks? Right? Let's get the headline again, okay? Core inflation rises to a 40-year high. That's not when the Fed is going to begin saying, you know what? Uh, we're going to let the lag play out here. No, they might be able to let the lag play out to bring inflation for the final few percentage or something. That would be a much more reasonable argument, in my opinion. But they can't say, let's let the lag play out when we're making new highs. No, they have to get the trend at least going in their direction. Then maybe they say, OK, the trend is coming. We've seen the turn. Right. So let's let's let that turn play out as opposed to accelerating it. We're not even close to that right now uh, in that market. So. That's your euro US dollar. And as Kevin mentioned, we had the pound US dollar, okay? Now, on a 15 minute basis, man, you were all the way up to almost 113, and boom, just like that, you're back to 111 on that CPI data. It's going to be an interesting open, folks. SP's down 2.17%. Stay tuned. We'll be right back in three minutes. Don't go away. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you're looking at an S&P negative by 77 points off 2.17%. We're dropping a little bit. You're negative by 80. We jump over to the VIX. Volatility index right now. Pretty interesting, right, VIX? Is that trading? I feel like the VIX might be stuck on my screen right now. Can somebody tell me what time is that at? Yeah, I'm stuck at like 916 for some reason. Does somebody else have the VIX? Is that happening on Thinkorswim only? Uh, maybe if in the Tiger's Den, you can let me know. Uh, but you can see, I'm kind of stuck only on the VIX at about 912, 914, 916, something like that on the VIX. Let me see if I can size it out. 3339, okay. I guess that's what it's showing, that's what I'm at. Thank you, Duffy. Uh, s and is negative by 78. So the other data point we got this morning, a distant, distant, distant data point behind the CPI that ran hot, was unemployment claims. Initial unemployment claims reach a six-week high in the wake of Hurricane Ian. Um, yeah, and something is happening, I think, folks. Oh, no, there it is. It's connected. Okay. So VIX up a bit, 33.54. I was just going to you know, not, uh, not higher to a dramatic degree when you have the market actually sell off. Part of that having to do with potentially the fact that all that volatility premium gets sucked out now that we know, right, the move, um, the CPI number that was such a premium factored into so much of what's going on there with the VIX sitting at 33.55 as you get the NASDAQ 100. Now off more than 3%. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. The big dog, Apple. How about Apple? Down $3.30, but it catches a little bit of a bid. Apple's $2 off of its lowest, folks. Uh, Microsoft shares right now, down $5.75. That's 2.5% in the red, barely off of the lows. Microsoft just gave up $10, though, from where it was pre-market. I mean, we were higher pre-market. That's what to remember as well. All these markets down dramatically. But you had the S&P, folks, trading at 36.44. Now, take that spike out. I don't know why it accelerated at 3.28. Who was buying two minutes into the CPI? But you're 120. Yeah, you're 120 points below where you were trading at for about an hour and a half, an hour coming into that CPI number, 120 as you continue to drop. Uh, we're right near pre-market session highs on that S&P. Okay, what else do we have going on? How about this chart? Let's talk about some of the CPI components. There's your categories, folks. Fuel, airfare, natural gas, gasoline, dairy and related products, electricity, motor vehicle maintenance. Uh, if you're in the if you're in the need for alcohol or hospital services, you're in luck. Those two are the lagging of that chart there in terms of the CPI select categories year over year. This is percentage change. You see fuel, you see airfare, okay? And boy, you talk about it, man. Now, I just had, I believe, pulled up here. Oh, where were we? Here we go. Airfare component of the September CPI inflation is up by 42.9% year over year, the fastest rate on record. There's a lot going on, folks, in these numbers. Uh, to get overall numbers back down to 2 and 3% when you have components like I just pulled up, up 40, 50, 60% on a year over year basis, uh, you're seeing it. Airfares, 42.9% inflation year over year. Psh. I mean, imagine, you got to get back down to 2%, and airfares are pushing 42%, okay? Boy, wild stuff going on across the board. Now, I jump from there because we got some earnings today, folks, and one of those companies is Delta as they are trading higher. Delta, you raise your prices 42%, even where crude is, you're able to make some money, but guess what? When the market does what it does, you're off 1.9% for Delta. That's a 15-minute chart to see the volatility on their numbers. You give it all back and then some. You take a look at Delta. I mean, this thing is in some rough territory, man. You've given back more than the 618 in the entire run higher you had after COVID. Came into COVID at 62 bucks. COVID lows were at about 20. Yeah, you got a 1751 low, but you can see from March 16th to May 18th, okay, until government rescue came into greater clarity, you basically had the lows of Delta at 21. And you're telling me right now it's at 28. But they got a lot of problems, even raising prices 42% with where crude is and with the potential for an economic slowdown. But with that in mind, we have the S&Ps clawing back some of it, folks. I mean, you have to understand that at some point, the market just gets the fact that the Fed's going to bring it until they know that they're going to crush inflation. And guess what? Stocks will be okay. All right. And we will get through this to some degree. But we're coming with 75 or even 100 basis points in the November meeting. You're probably coming with 
75 or 50 in December. And then you're probably coming with some cuts, some hikes, cuts uh, in 2023 until the Fed can realistically be confident that they are in a restrictive policy that is restricting the economy. Uh, maybe you see the jobs numbers starting to come down. That would be very helpful. We saw the job openings decrease by a million versus what was expected. Uh, we still have unemployment at 3.5 percent. That's a problem, folks. OK, and it's not a problem. Uh, for the people in the job force, it is a problem when you have inflation running at a 40-year high on a core basis, and it shows no sign of letting up whatsoever. So Delta had their numbers, strong numbers this morning. You give it back, though, with the market. Let's see. we got Walgreens. Yeah, they were uh, better than expected quarterly profit and revenue. They raised its long-term sales outlook. Let's see how they handled the sell-off. So look at that. That's one bright note. Now, that's a weekly. You talk about a pullback, man. 55 down to 30 for Walgreens. Look at that, man. Below the 2020 lows. These markets, man. But this morning, look at that. It gave back its entire gain, but it looks like the earnings are going to win out on Walgreens, even on a day like today where the S&Ps are down by 80. That's some strength for you, folks, because it gave it all back on the open. But when that market opened, you got quite a pop on Walgreens. And basically, you got the entire – this thing opened flat, and now you're up 5% as demand came into that stock on their numbers. Uh, AMAT lowered its current quarter revenue outlook. Chip makers, man. Watch out for those chip makers. My dad was saying on his program, down 6.1% for AMAT. Yeah, these chip stocks. Let us down, let us up, let us up, let us down. You're going to open, yeah, 71 from 167 earlier this year, right back to where we were coming into COVID practically at a price point of about $70 for AMAT. Man. Victoria's Secret is a little bit higher after they said the current quarter sales and profit would come in at the high end of the prior forecast. Uh, yeah, and they have an, a meeting with analysts and investors scheduled for today, VSCO. This stock has gotten hammered as well, man. Whew. They go public with a spinoff from Bath & Body Works, accelerate to 76, trade down to 26. Today, holding okay on that news. Yeah, they were higher. Give it back. Victoria's Secret down about six tenths percent as the market holds up pretty much right where we were coming into that. So the Taiwan Semiconductor, maybe a lone bright spot right there. Nope, they give it back as well, down 2.5 percent, even on some decent numbers. And you talk about a pullback from 145 down to 62 dollars for Taiwan Semi. And Kohl's might have an activist investor issue coming up. Kohl's down 4.2 percent right now. Yeah, they were a little bit higher on a journal report that you got McKellum Advisors warning the retailer that another proxy battle could be coming, and they're looking for three director seats uh, after talks to sell the retailer earlier this year collapsed. I like Kohl's, too, man. I, I do some shopping in Kohl's. They have a good experience. They have good prices, man. Kohl's, you take a look at this thing on a longer-term basis. Quite a pullback, basically chopping around near COVID lows. Had no business being near $50, I guess, for the better part of last year. Early this year, Kohl's at 25 bucks down another 4% right now. We'll jump over to Amazon as we come into the break. Off 6.2%, folks. Wild move. Stay tuned. We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P right now down just 72 points, so a little bit of a bounce off the lows. We don't make it to 3,500. We make it to 3,502. Let's put it back to a five-minute chart to see the acceleration at 830. We open at 930, make it to 3,502. Since then, we're up by 15 points. Market could be worse, folks. Uh, I know it's easy to say, but it definitely could be worse because that was a pretty hot CPI number at 8.30 this morning. You do have markets down dramatically. Some of the stocks, as I just talked about, Amazon, right? Amazon down 5.7%, man. You trade off $6.51. Tesla shares off 3.3% right now. We jumped around to some of the other FANG stocks. Microsoft off 1.8%. Apple, the big dog, off 1.9% right now. We jump over to Google, off 2.5%. MetaShares, trading off 3.3%, man. Let's jump over to some of those banks with their earnings tomorrow. Look at that. JP Morgan, flat. They claw it all back almost. Morgan Stanley, negative 1.8% right now. Wells Fargo, off about 1%. Bank of America, off about 8 tenths percent right now. Uh, and let's jump to some of those currencies. Dollar index right now. Pulls back a bit. We almost make it to 114. In any other universe, folks, these moves would be mammoth that we get even in the pullback. Look at the move. From 112.80, up a full point to 113.92. And since then, we've traded down about 40 pennies. Let's put it on a five minute to see the spike on the CPI up to 113.92. And let's jump to gold, man. Continuing to struggle. Gold right near the session lows at 1651. Yeah, I don't know where the dollar yen stock. So it's 147. Oh, well, we got a little pullback. There you go. Up to 147.66. Not sure what happened at 920. What did happen at 920? Is anybody in the Dendo? That's quite a bar on the dollar yen. Somebody step in there. Somebody might have done something because that was quite a move at 920, 925 coming into the opening bell. Not sure that tail is all realistic, but either way, it dropped from 147.62 to 147.16 on the dollar yen after that dramatic move up at about 8.30 this morning. We jumped to notes and bonds. Quite the move here indeed. You're talking about a 10-year right now, down a full point and five ticks. But we came into that announcement, folks, with the 10-year already in positive territory. So you dropped basically a point and a half from where you were at that price point. Now, you take a look at this thing on a longer-term basis. There's no end in sight just yet, folks. Now, you could make a case that we have an A to B, C to D. All right? Your A point. Let's call it 129, your B point potentially, 114, maybe a 15 point A to B, C to D, okay? And that takes you down to about 107. We're at 110 on that index. Pretty close to some of those extensions taking place and pretty remarkable when you get a 15 point A to B, C to D, and it completes it all 
in the span of what, six, seven months almost? Pretty remarkable. All right, let's jump over the VIX right now, see how the VIX is trading. Yeah, 33.87, slightly elevated, but pretty much where we chopped around for the better part of yesterday. We actually opened yesterday at 34.53, so even with the market selling off 78, uh, market participants meeting, needing a little bit less premium as you get one huge data point out of the way. Even if it's a hot data point, it's now out of the way, and we have the VIX still under 34. You take a look at the VIX on a daily basis. The one thing I will say is this is going back last 12 months, folks, right? I don't have to tell you that we're coming into potential area that has been a high for the VIX before we've gotten some pullbacks, man. Uh, keep in mind, folks, okay? August 17th, going back to the S&Ps, okay? August 17th, the S&Ps were trading at 4,300. We just gave up, they were trading more than that, 4,327. Yeah, we just gave up 810 S&P points. That is about a 20% drop in less than two months. Okay, so I know things are dire, and the S&Ps obviously had no business being up here in August at 4,300. There's your CPI drop off when we came into the CPI print for the month of August, okay? We were sitting at 4,175. So even since September 13th, folks, it's October 13th, the S&Ps have dropped in the last month alone 600 points, no higher. Yeah, 650 points. Whew. And that's almost a 20% move there. Not quite, okay? Yeah, but about a 15% move in a period of a month. The point being, s and is now down 65. We just dropped 15% in the s and P's in a month, folks, okay? So the market was well aware probably that this number was going to run pretty hot because we just traded from the last CPI print. Remember, that day was a huge day to the downside, but we didn't stop, man. That day completed at 39.52. You paused at 3,600, and now we're at 3,500. It's going to be a wild one to see where we finish, folks, if maybe this market saves itself, thinking that, you know what? We already knew that the, this was a max pain situation. When we got that CPI print in September 13th, maybe enough market participants were well aware enough that they traded down 600 points coming into the next CPI print to get ahead of that number. It's happened before, folks. Okay, you want to see what happens when you trade into a number? How about going into that first hike from the Federal Reserve? The market trades from 4,800 down to 4,200. And what do we do on March 15th when we finally get that hike? The S&P has bounced 400 points to talk about a lofty area of 4,600. It's going to be a wild one. As I said, s and down 63. We're getting a little bit of a bounce, man. Uh, would be remarkable if this was the buy, right? When's the buy? The buy is when everyone's screaming, oh, my goodness, it's October 13th. We're coming into the end of 2022, and inflation won't stop printing highs for 40 years. But sometimes that's how it is, man. S&P's down by 65. All right, let's jump around and see what else I have pulled up here. Uh, talking about what the Fed is pricing in. Shouldn't be surprising, folks, that they are Fed swaps fully priced. Three-quarter point rate hike in November. Conversation is going to start going uh, to higher than that, folks. The rate on the November overnight index swap contract rose to 3.86%, more than 75 basis points above the current effective Fed. So already, if anything, it's going to 100. Uh, shouldn't be surprising there. And yeah, 6.6% was the number we got on core, the highest level since 1982. And what's crazy in this, folks, is that it's speeding up. From a month earlier, the core number is up 0.6%, which would mean a 7.2% annualized rate. Core inflation is heating up in the last 30 days versus the last 12 months. And over the last 12 months, it's at a 40-year high. That's bonkers data when you put it that way, folks, but that's the case, okay? That should be the headline. Core CPI is at a 40-year high. And it's actually accelerating in the last 30 days versus that 12-month print. Wild numbers when you look at it. All right, what else do we have up here? Talking about Domino's. They're out with their numbers. Reports mixed third quarter results. U.S. same-store sales increase. And uh, we'll see how Domino's is trading. What are they? Pizza, right? DPZ is their symbol. DPZ for Domino's Pizza. I used to love Domino's. Oh, look at that, man. There you go. There you go. There's a bright note on a tough day, man. I say, hey, S&P's down 59, man. This is going to be an interesting day, folks, because these markets really could have sold off if this was a max pain fear situation. And they're already up 30 points from the lows. 
it wouldn't it be remarkable if you actually finished positive today? Haven't said that many times, right? But maybe people are finally willing to say, you know what? The Fed's bringing it. They're bringing it. We already know it's 75 the next meeting. Maybe it's 75 the meeting after that. We already know that inflation's out of control. But the S&Ps are at 3,500, down from 4,800 earlier this year, folks. As S&Ps catch a little bit of a list, lift in Domino's Pizza, up by 9.42%. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. S&Ps only down by 55 points now. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Don't call to come back just yet, but man, we are 40 points, more than 1% off the lows right now. Quite an acceleration beginning at 945, about nine minutes ago. S&P's now just off 1.3%. NASDAQ just off 2.1%. Man, NASDAQ 100, 130 points off the lows. As our man Basil Chapman, who's coming up next, folks, he says the day is young. It couldn't be younger. We're only 24 minutes into the trading day. But surprising strength off of the lows right now. And pay attention to that, folks, because pretty dire data, but the market might be telling you, as I just went over in that scenario, okay, don't forget how far we've traded coming into this number. Don't forget that just two months ago, we were at 4,300, and folks, one month ago to the day, we got the CPI print on September 13th, we were at 4,175. You have given up 640 points 
from that price level, a solid 15%. S&Ps have traded down 15% in one month. So yeah, you know, there's a lot of negativity priced into this market. They figure things out, I think, on that September number when they drove this market down to 3,600. Not necessarily something that we're gonna turn green, but already quite a clawback of 1%. We are up since we started trading just about 10 minutes ago. And you know what? I was looking at Domino's, man. Domino's is a good deal, okay? Now, they got a deal, folks. I don't have any Domino's in retirement or anything. Maybe I should get some. Uh, we'll take a look. Domino's, talk about a pullback from 567. We'll end. Now, Domino's, folks, not healthy. Processed food is not healthy for you. If I one thing I, I like spending my time on, trying to be healthy, folks, and I'm, I'm, I'm just as quick to go to the freezer and grab a snack of ice cream and, and everything in moderation, folks. So have your snacks if you want them, okay? But fresh food, folks, meat, vegetables, um, lean meats especially, have a hamburger occasionally, you get that fit, all that stuff, processed carbs, processed sugars, especially having a kid in the house now, sugar is in everything, man. Be careful of it. Guess what, man? I ordered two medium pizzas from Domino's. I was checking it out. $6.99 a pop. You got two medium pizzas delivered for, guess what, $19.95. It's a heck of a deal, man, for Domino's when you look at especially what some pizza companies charge. That is two medium pizzas delivered. For $6.95 each. They got quite a deal. There it is. $6.99 each. We'll end it with Domino's. Why not? S&P's down 52. Stay tuned, folks. It's going to be an interesting one. Basil's up next. Have a great Thursday, everybody.